Good morning everyone. So today I have the comic strip Black Bob for you. I'm going to read the comic strip and I'm going to explain any difficult words or phrases along the way so that you can read and understand a comic strip and have 100% understanding. So let's get started. So the title of this comic strip is Black Bob and here we can see two characters. We have a man and we have a dog. This kind of dog is probably a sheep dog. A sheep dog is a dog that works on a farm and its job is to round up the sheep. So when the sheep are separated and you need to round them up so the dog will run around them and the sheep will all come together and bring and it will bring the sheep to the farmer so it rounds up the sheep. And here we've got a farmer, he's wearing a peak cap. This is a peak cap, a, a very typical uh, hat that a farmer wears. Um, he's also wearing some farmer's clothes, like a farmer's jacket and farmer's trousers. And he's also got this um, instrument. Now, to be honest, oh, I don't know what the word is for this kind of instrument. So let me see if I can find out. Okay, so this object, after a little research, is called a crook, a shepherd's crook, C-R-O-O-K, a shepherd's crook, which he uses to catch the sheep if they're running away. So he has the crook and he also has a sheepdog to help to gather and round up his sheep. Now, here's the intro and it says, Andrew Glenn was a farmer who lived and worked in the beautiful Borders countryside. Andrew's sheepdog, Black Bob, was his constant and faithful companion. So Andrew Glenn is the name of this man. <clears throat> so he was a farmer and he worked in the beautiful Borders countryside. So the Borders is an area of the UK. When you're driving north uh, through England and then you hit the border between England and Scotland and you go into Scotland, then that area is the Borders. So the first area into Scotland we call the Borders or the Scottish Borders. <laughs> It's a very beautiful area. I know it well because my mother uh, was born there. My grandma uh, lived there. Uh, so I've visited there many, many times in my life. And if you ever come to the UK, then I recommend it. Um, Scotland is just a wonderful place to visit anyway. But the borders is very, it's very attractive. Very, There's a lot of beautiful countryside. It's very hilly and green, lots of farms. It's very nice though. So... He works in the borders, so he's Scottish. He's a Scottish man. Glenn is kind of a Scottish surname, Andrew Glenn. And Andrew's sheepdog is called Black Bob. So this is Black Bob, and Black Bob is the name of this comic strip. And Black Bob was his constant and faithful companion. So a companion is like a friend, someone who keeps you company. To keep someone company means to stay with them and talk with them. If you have company, you have someone with you who you can talk to. If you don't have company, you don't have someone with you. So a companion is someone who stays with you throughout your life. Uh, usually we use it for a very, very close friend or maybe a, a romantic partner, companion. And this dog was a faithful companion. So someone that's faithful will never, uh, will never disappoint you will never let you down. They'll never let you down. They'll always support you. To let someone down is to disappoint them. So they'll never disappoint you. They'll always stay with you. They'll always keep you company. They'll always do what you want to do and support you. So he was a faithful companion, like dogs are. Okay. The farm was on high ground, which meant the weather could change in an instant. Dangerous during the vital spring lambing season. So the farm was on high ground, so it wasn't low, it was high above the sea, above the sea, very high above, which meant that the weather could change in an instant. So it could be very sunny and then suddenly it could pour down with rain. Dangerous during the vital spring lambing season. So it's a very important time when they are lambing. And when you're lambing, it means when the sheep are giving birth and they're giving birth to lambs because a 
baby sheep is a lamb. Baby sheep is a lamb. So the lambing season is when all the sheep usually become pregnant. When they become pregnant and they give birth to baby lambs. And the weather at this point could change very suddenly. And that was very dangerous because the lambing season is very vital, vital, vital is like really important, really important because, of course, the sheep for the farmer are his, are the money he earns and the food he eats. Maybe he eats them. I don't know if he eats them or if he just uh, takes off the wool and sells the wool. Um, But this is his this is something very important for him. So if the weather changes, he can maybe lose sheep or... So it's very important to know where the sheep are because that weather can change in an instant and maybe he could lose sheep. So Andrew Glenn says, it's starting to snow, Bob. Winter hasn't left the hills yet. We'd better get the lambs down the hill and into the barn. So that's my Scottish accent. I'll do it in an English accent too. (laughs) It's starting to snow, Bob. Winter hasn't left the hills yet. We'd better get the lambs down the hill and into the barn. So it's starting to snow. The winter has not gone away. So we'd better, which means uh, we should, we should get the lambs the baby sheep, down the hill and into the barn. The barn is where you keep farm animals uh, in wintertime. So it's a, a house, a building to keep animals in, to keep farm animals in. So you have a barn where you might have cows, horses, sheep, etc. So they can stay in the barn. So he needs to get this lamb, these lambs off the hill and he needs to take them to the barn. Bring them back, Bob. Nice and steady. Okay, again, in my English version. Bring them back, Bob. Nice and steady. So he's saying to Black Bob, bring the lambs back. Go get the lambs. Bring them back. Nice and steady. Nice and steady is like mm, carefully. Do it carefully. Uh, If you do something in a steady way, something steady, it's like constant and careful. If something's not steady, It's like it's moving around a lot and it's unpredictable. Uh, So when you say nice and steady, it's just like do it in a careful way. Nice and steady, nice and steady. Okay, Like, for example, if you uh, are a tightrope walker, okay, there's a rope that goes between uh, one uh, building and another building. There's a rope in between them and you walk along the rope. And you hold a stick. You have to do it nice and steady. So walk slow and carefully. Okay. If you don't do it in a steady way, then you'll fall. So Black Bob has to be very steady and do it this a careful way uh, and not get too excited. That's it, Bob. You know what to do. So that's it, Bob. You know what to do. Go on, Bob. You know the job. You know how to do it. What on earth are those sheep doing? They never run away from Bob like that. So what what on earth are those sheep doing? They never run away from Bob like that. So first of all, we've got this phrase, what on earth? What on earth? What on earth? What on earth is a way to express our surprise. What on earth are you doing? So why are you doing that? What the hell? It's a little bit ruder. What the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing? That's a little bit more rude. What on earth are you doing? So it's a way to express our surprise. And in this situation, he's surprised that the sheep are running away from Bob. They never run away from Bob. They normally come to Bob. Something's got them spooked. All right. Come on, Bob. Something's got them spooked. All right, come on, Bob. Something's got them spooked. If you're spooked, it means you're scared. So something's happened to spook the sheep. 
to scare the sheep. They're spooked. They're scared for some reason. But uh, Andrew Glenn, the farmer, doesn't know why they're spooked. And he says, come on, Bob. Come on, Bob. This is a way to say, you can do it. You can do it, Bob. Come on, Bob. Bob sped round behind the panicking sheep. He sped round behind the panicking sheep. So sped is the past tense of the verb to speed. Now, usually speed isn't used as a verb, but sometimes it can be a verb. To speed, to speed, for example, when you're driving a car, if you speed, that means that you drive faster than the limit. So the limit on the road, there's a sign, and maybe it says it's 30 miles per hour, the limit. If you drive at 35, then you're speeding, you're speeding. Uh, so to speed normally in the context of a car means to drive faster than the limit. In this case, it just means he moved in a quick way. He sped round, he sped round behind the panicking sheep. And these sheep are, <laughs> meh, meh, meh. they're panicking. Here you can see Andrew Glenn in the distance with his crook, with his crook, just to practice that word, with his crook. And here is, uh, here is uh, Black Bob speeding around the back, around behind the panicking sheep. And just in time too, they had run right to the edge of a sheer cliff. Oh God. So it was just in time, just in time. Very, very lucky. If Black Bob had not sped around behind the back of these sheep, then they would have maybe walked right off the edge of the cliff. <laughs> so here we can see it's a sheer cliff. A sheer cliff is a way to say that the, she the cliff is very, very much a straight vertical drop. It's a sheer cliff, so that it's a straight vertical drop. It's not like uh, this angle, it just goes straight down. It's a sheer cliff. Okay. One lamb who had lost touch with its mother ran headlong over the edge. Oh no. So this little lamb ran headlong over the edge of the cliff <laughs> okay, so it had lost touch with its mother, which means to touch, obviously, this is to touch. I touch my hands, I touch my nose, I touch my hair. If you lose touch with someone, uh, usually means that you haven't spoken to that person in a long time. So you might lose touch with people that you went to school with. When you were at school with them, you were good friends, you spoke very often. And then when you leave school, you go to different places and you don't text, you don't text anymore, you don't call anymore, so you lose touch with them. In this case, it's not exactly the same. In this case, it means that the sheep has lost its mother, it can't find its mother. Um, but I must say, this is maybe slightly strange, I wouldn't say it had lost touch with its mother, because it does sound like that, it sounds like the sheep hadn't spoken to its mother for a long time uh, on the phone, or it hadn't texted its mother, or it hadn't seen its mother in a long time. Sounds a little strange in this context, but here it means that it's lost its mum, can't find its mum, and it ran headlong over the cliff. So it went off the cliff, over the edge, head first, head first, ran headlong over the edge. The poor creature stumbled and fell down the steep slope. So, as you can imagine, it stumbled, bah, 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 and then it fell, head, it fell down the steep slope. Sorry. The poor creature stumbled bah, 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 and fell down the steep slope. Okay, so to stumble is when you're walking and your foot goes in the wrong place and you go, oh, oh. That's when you stumble. You're walking along and oh, I'm okay. I didn't fall down, I just stumbled. Okay, maybe if you drink a few beers on the way home, 
you might stumble a little bit. So this creature stumbled on the edge and then it fell down the steep slope. Oops. At the bottom lay a river full of powerful currents at this time of year. <laughs> so here is the lamb in the river, and the river is full of powerful currents. The current of the river is the movement of the river. Sometimes the river can have a really fast current and sometimes it's a very slow, gentle current. But here at this time of the year in the borders in Scotland, the current is very strong, so it will easily take the lamb away. The current's got him, Bob. We must act, we must act, oh, sorry. The current's got him, Bob. We must act quickly. So the current's got him, Bob. We must act quickly. So he's pointing his shepherd's crook. He's saying to Bob, Bob, you must get the sheep, get the lamb now. We must act quickly. To act means we must do something. We must act. We must do something to fix this problem. We must act. If you don't act, then you lose the opportunity to save the lamb. Or you lose the opportunity to do something. You have to act. You have to do something. We must act. Bob knew exactly what he had to do. And Bob starts to run. Starts to speed down the hill. Down the cliff. Towards the sheep. The brave dog plunged down the cliff face. And here you can see the little lamb. In the river being taken away. By the current. And here he plunged down the cliff face. So it's a plunge whoo, means to go down somewhere really quickly. Um, okay. For example, I could say that when I want to find something in my pocket, uh, my pocket, I'm just trying to show you my pocket. Here's my pocket. So if I want to get something out of my pocket, I could plunge my hand into my pocket. So I'm putting my hand in quickly and deeply into my pocket to get something. Ah, oh, yes, I've got it. So to plunge is to move down quickly into a deep space. You often talk about plunging into the water. So he plunged down the cliff face. What's going to happen next? He's being swept away, Bob. Quickly now. He's being swept away, Bob. Quickly now. So he's being swept away. To be swept away means to be taken away by the current. Let me get something. Here is my broom, and with my broom I can sweep the floor. Now, in this case, the lamb is being swept away by the current of the river. It's being swept away. So quickly, so act quickly, Bob. Bob, Bob leapt into the freezing water, thinking only to save the lamb from drowning. So Bob leapt into the freezing water. To leap is to take, take a long jump. A jump and a leap. So he leapt into the freezing water thinking only to save the lamb from drowning. So here it's saying that he is not thinking about himself. The dog is not worried about getting wet. The dog is not scared of the water. The dog is only thinking about saving the lamb. It's only focused on that. Bob was a powerful swimmer and he soon had the lamb back on dry land. Here is Bob with the lamb hanging from his mouth. And you can see Bob is dripping with water. Probably very cold water as well. Freezing cold water. Bob is dripping with freezing cold water. And here is the lamb saved. Well done, Bob. That lamb was a goner for sure. If it wasn't for you. <laughs> and in English... In an English accent. Well done, Bob. That lamb was a gunner for sure if it wasn't for you. So he congratulates Bob. Well done, Bob. That lamb was a gunner. To be a gunner means that you are gone. You have no chance. You're a gunner. He's a gunner. You're going to die. 
He's a goner. He's a complete. He's a goner. He's a goner. There's nothing we can do now. He has gone. He's a goner. He's a goner. Uh, it's usually used in the in the context of someone dying uh, when there's an opportunity to save someone. Okay, there's an opportunity to save someone in a place, for example, maybe there's a, a bomb going to go off, okay, and someone wants to go back into a building to save their friend. And you say, no, the bomb is about to go off in two seconds. Beep, beep. He's a goner. He's a goner, okay? So we only want to save someone, uh, save someone's life, and you can't, then you can say, they're a goner. They're a goner. So, uh here andrew says that the lamb was a goner for sure it was definitely a goner if it wasn't for you so if it wasn't for you if you had not been there black bob if you had not been there black bob then the lamb would have been a goner but it wasn't <sighs> that's it let the lamb back to its mother now. That's it. Let the lamb back to its mother now. Let the lamb. So let the lamb back to its mother means let the lamb go back to its mother. It's a slightly more colloquial or slang way to say it. Uh, it's probably a sort of more regional English thing to say let the lamb back to its mother in a uh, in more standard RP English, it would be more common to say, let the lamb go back. We would need another verb to let the lamb go back to its mother. So here you can see Bob lets the lamb back to its mother. And the lamb looks very happy and the mother looks quite happy too to see its lamb. And uh, Andrew says, it's frozen through. We'd best get this one under some heat lamps to dry it out. It's frozen through. We'd best we'd best get this one under some heat lamps to dry it out. So it's frozen through. This lamb is freezing cold. Freezing cold. Absolutely freezing. So we'd best is the same as we'd better. We should. We should. We should. We'd best. We'd better. We should get this one under some heat lamps to dry it out. So we should put this lamb under some hot lamps, some hot lights, so that it can get warm and it can dry. Because at the moment it's dripping with water. Blip, 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 blip. With the lamb returned to safety, they brought the herd in with no more incident. So here the lamb is now safe. It's returned to safety. It's safe. And so they brought the herd in with no more incident. The herd means a group of animals. A group, usually for a group of sheep, we call it a herd. It could also be a herd of elephants or a herd of cows, a herd of, uh, herd of horses. Might be possible. Um, though you don't often have a herd of horses. You normally have just a few, I suppose. But uh, yeah. A herd of lambs means a large, or a herd of sheep means a group of them. And with no more incident means with no more bad things happening, <laughs> with no more uh, problems arising. A prob when a problem arises, it happens. So no more problems have arisen, no more bad things have happened. So they brought the herd in with no more incident. And here you can see Andrew Glenn is holding the lamb in his arms and it looks like he's put some um, some blanket or some warm thing around the lamb to help it to warm up and to uh, to dry out as well and here the last page of this comic strip the last part of this comic strip here is Andrew and here is Black Bob and here is a sheep and probably the lamb and Black Bob, sorry, Andrew, says, That's us for the night. But I wonder what spooked the herd so badly, Bob. That's us for the night. But I wonder what spooked the herd so badly, Bob. So that's us for the night. That means that's it for the night. That's 
we've done everything we need to do for tonight. That's us for the night. But I wonder what spooked the herd so badly, Bob. I wonder what scared the herd of sheep so badly. What was the reason that the herd was so scared? And he asks that question to Bob. Um, and perhaps that's a question I can leave with you. What do you think spooked the sheep, spooked the herd? I guess we might find this out later. But that does depend on whether I can find the next uh, version of this uh, comic strip. So I hope, I hope so. Um, I will try my best to find it so that we can continue this one and find out what, hap what happened, what spooked this, uh, this herd of sheep. Now I have a, one more question for you. Let's go back and let me ask. Um, okay, so my question is, what almost happened to the whole herd um, just before... Mm, sorry, let me rephrase that. What almost happened to the whole herd if uh, Black Bob hadn't run around them in time? You can pause the video here and give me your answer, and after I'll give you an answer. So, a suggested answer would be that if uh, Black Bob hadn't arrived in time, then the herd could have all gone off the edge of that sheer cliff. So, that's the suggested answer for you. Okay, so that's it for today. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please let me know in the comments what you thought of the video. And again, I want to thank you all, if you have, for your support. Um, you can always just like this video, uh, write a comment, subscribe, all of these things help me. And uh, that's it, and I will see you again soon. So have a lovely day, or evening, or morning. See you soon. Bye.